It's the most wonderful day in the world. Oh, it's not the really. world. But well, wasn't that that's how the song goes? Right? Year. It's the huh? most wonderful, wonderful day time of the year. Of the year. T- time of the year. God. I How American am I? I spent too much time in Germany apparently. <laughs> My, I don't know. I don't know my uh, Christmas songs. All right, that's okay. That's okay. If you don't know, Germans Christmas have different songs. Christmas songs. Oh yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Um, okay, but we've got to hit this because we've got the Jamaica coming game coming up. We got the roster. So who do we start in this first game against Jamaica, which I believe is a must win for Greg. You think he knows it's... that we want six to seven points out of this this series here. We've so, got yeah, we've got we've got two home games and yes. two home games against a, a weekend Jamaica and an aged Costa Rican team. Yeah, uh, it, these have you were expected if you're going to qualify, you're expected to win your home matches, flat yes. out. Nobody can argue against that. If you, oh, part, if, God, you mess, but, if you mess up and get a draw against Canada, you've got to make it up on a, on the away matches. Um, as simple as that. So we all, have to, we have to win these home matches. All these halfwits that think we're going to win all of our home games are smoking some serious pot or better pot than mine because we're not. And we haven't. We've already, you know, tied to uh, tied a home match against Canada. We could tie future games. So no, we need to win this all thing. games. We could, games. we could, but in, like I said, in order to qualify, it's expected that you win all of your, win all of your home games. Now again. We we tied against Canada. We had to make those points up somewhere. We're gonna have to do that on the road, quite frankly, or rely on uh, some of the teams to lose some of their home games too. It just, I mean, it all depends. You plan for the worst. That's the, yeah. how everybody should plan. You plan for the worst. That means you've got to go away on occasion and get a win. We haven't done it yet. We're hoping that'll happen this yeah, window. Oh yeah, Honduras. <laughs> I'm saying we got it's the only one. game we've won so far. I know, but we got another game coming up against Panama that is very winnable. Yeah, it should be a W, folks. A W. So you're There's saying nine? You're saying nine points for this window, right? I think Costa Rica is going to be a <laughs> tough game. I think it's going to be tough, even though it's at home. It's going to be tough, and if we end that at a tie, we got to well, assure ourselves we beat Jamaica. We got to beat Panama. We'll worry about Costa Rica. And, but how, you know. how different of a squad would we expect from, say, the time we played them after Nations League? I mean, I know they were beaten down and worn out from playing Nations League, and we beat them 4-1 in the process. But how different will that team be? You're talking about Jamaica? No, Costa Rica. Oh, I don't, I don't know. But I don't know how different it's going to be. They're keeping a lot of I mean, the old guys in the roster. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's a di- there's obviously a difference between playing in a friendly after a nation the two game Nations League, and then playing in a uh, World Cup qualifier. Oh yeah. So, but but then, then again, it's also the third World Cup qualifier in six days at that point. So um, even though yeah. we're missing a couple key players, we still have a relatively deep squad that I feel like we can remain fresh throughout the cup, and I think that's going to be our strong point. This World and, Cup is just and, keeping fresh. And do you have the standings up? I'm going to go to the standings um, because that's going to make a difference about how teams are going to play us as well. Um, so if I go to the standings. Uh, standings right now, um, Costa Rica is in fifth place with two, uh, two points. Yeah, that's danger for them. They're coming. Yeah. They're going to be coming balls out for us. Sure, but that could, that could actually will work in our favor, though. It will. I know so it will. It's going to be yeah. a benefit to us. It, uh, the team, the team. If Costa Rica is smart, what they'll what they'll do is they'll kind of sit back and uh, counter and break us down. You know, they'll counter, and because yeah. that's what people do to us. Because you know, we we allow too much space between our lines, and we're too spread out a lot of the times. We don't condense the field. I think Berhalter even mentioned that in the Bobby Warshaw uh, interview. So, and maybe he'll fix that. But Jamaica, they are in, like, this is a must win. If they lose this game, they are already at the bottom of the table. They are totally fucking hosed going forward if they don't get a point out of this game with us. And maybe well, they've and that's already the thing. That's the thing. They, they may end up doing that. They may do exactly what El Salvador did, what uh, Canada did against uh, us in the first half at least. Is Jamaica, you know, they're missing a couple key players too. They may they may opt to just sort of sit back and then try to beat us on the counter and is, go that is route. Jamaica, is Jamaica still on the red list? That's my question. Because if they're on the red list still, 
then their team's going to be as fucking crappy as it was last roster for them in the last window. I mean, some of these teams are getting utterly effed, fucked in the rear end by this UK red list because that's where most Jamaican players are coming from. And so it's screwing up their whole roster. So we'll see if it gets screwed up again. I didn't look to see what their roster is. I've been focused on the USA all day. But, you know, if they they get screwed again, we need this win because it should be a lot easier. Although, you know, we said that years ago. So let's get to the starting 11. Um, this is the big one. Who starts the goalkeeper? Brett, I got Turner. I think Turner's yeah. going to start. Well, I mean, you and I both think that. Now, we can't put anything past Burhalter. He may end up going with uh, Stefan because, you know, he feels comfortable. And we all know that he likes to play – or. Uh, bring struggles. players who are all comfortable with you know yep but uh no there's i don't i don't i, I personally don't think he's gonna bench turner turner's been absolutely on on key with every single match he's played for the united states national team uh he's been on key with uh new england and the mls all-star game so i mean just how how would how would you possibly bench a a, a goalkeeper that's playing every day or every week and he's on fire just and, absolutely yeah. on fire it's club teams in first in MLS, already qualified. One the of the fastest qualifications ever. Revolution, and I don't care what everybody thinks about Bruce Arena. I get it. He didn't win the game in, in you know, Trinidad and Tobago. The dude is a, he's a fucking mastermind, all right? The, he knows soccer. I don't mm -hmm. care where he goes. He wins. He didn't win that game. I understand it. Yep. But. Can we get off Arena's nuts? And he's I, a great not, not, not to go down that not to go down that uh, <laughs> that rabbit hole again, but not only did he not win that match, but it was had to be a, the most perfect storm ever for us not yeah. to qualify. So I yes. mean, it was one of those things where, like, yes, that game sucked, and all it we did. needed to do was get a result, and we would have qualified regardless. Yep. But even if we didn't win that game, it still required Mexico and I think what Costa Rica to lose. I mean, it was. Yeah. Just, it was it was insane, but it's, again, not jumping down that rabbit hole. It, yeah, it's not like Arena uh, fielded the U nineteen team. He made mistakes, okay. But all right, so off Arena's nuts, please. <laughs> off it. All right, um, we get it. He's not infallible, but he is a fucking mastermind. He's got the revs up where the revs just they aren't usually. All right, so we got the goalkeeper taken care of. Let's go with left back, and if he doesn't start Anthony Robinson in this game, Greg Scott. Yeah. Mental it has, issues. It has to be Robinson because there's no reason to play Bellow, especially since we're going to be going to Panama next and we don't have another left back option. And Robinson can't play yeah. there in Panama because of the UK's stupid red list. So, so it's going to be Robinson this match. Absolutely hands down without a doubt. Especially after last game. And yeah. then in the middle, this is where I was like a little sketchy, right? Um, I wasn't sure. I, I think it'll be miles and Brooks, but I'm a little like, I'm not sure about Brooks starting. He's, he's like kind of in a funk and maybe we mm. might see somebody else versus so Jamaica. We, we, we saw, we saw uh, the last window wasn't the greatest. Uh, we saw Brooks not start against El Salvador. He mm -hmm. played the entire match against Canada and he was pulled out of halftime against Honduras. Right. It's not going to be crazy to see Brooks not starting against Jamaica. Saying that, I also went with Brooks and Miles. Yeah, I did because I think it would almost be offensive. I mean, Brooks would take it really bad if he were left out of the starting lineup for this next game. And Berhalter's got to consider that, that this guy's in a funk and maybe this will get him out of the funk. And that's the thing, too. You can acknowledge the fact that he's in a funk, but then you can say, "Hey, man, I'm giving you the start because I have faith in you. I believe in you. You're a town. You're a talented motherfucker, and you're gonna come in here and you're gonna kill it. Absolutely kill it. Yeah. Uh, so I could see him not starting him, but personally, I think he starts him. I think the only challenge there is, and this is a tactical thing, the uh, Anthony Robinson likes to go up on the left, you know, high up the left and attack. And that does leave that space behind Brooks relatively open. And that if if Greg is thinking that too, then we might see someone faster and quicker, like Miles move over to that left spot and then McKenzie on the uh, right center back spot. I mean, that could happen. But, I mean, and to be fair, to, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I think um, 
Uh, in Honduras, I think uh, McKenzie ended up playing left back or left uh, left uh, we, um, center back, and he played left center back for the Union. So I mean, it's not out of his wheelhouse no. to play that position. Yeah, you could flip flop him, but I'd be worried about the attack, the speed. In of fairness, so, in fairness, though, you would one would imagine that say Dest starting at right back would mean that Dest would want to get up into the attack as well. Yes. So I mean, so, you're, you're, it, it, it's a it's a coin flip as far as I mean, who's where where when you know I think it's that, uh, it's basically the same thing on both sides. It's it's the real critical thing, right? The way Greg plays and how important the left and right backs are in the attack really means you need fast motherfuckers playing center back to recover mm-hmm. uh, on attacks that get behind um, the lines on either wing, and so. Uh, uh, you know, Adams will be there for that support in front of the t- front yep. four, but still you want faster and Brooks is just not fast and neither no. is Miazga, which is why he didn't make the team would be my in guess. fairness though. Then neither is Reem. Reem is not fast either. He's not. Fact, but he does. Reem's, Reem's probably the slowest center back we have. Yeah. I'm guessing Reem does, uh, you know, the 40 in what? Five seconds. I mean, excuse me. Uh, six five minutes. Seconds, so five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> It's not good. It's slow, but you know, give Reem credit, man. They just killed it today in the championship. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, he's, I think he's they still rocking. I mean, uh, Fulham's manager loves him. So, isn't he captain? I didn't look today if he was. The captain. I don't know, uh, but he is definitely, you know, the backbone of their defense. Robinson didn't play today. I guess he had a little uh, pull, but it's nothing serious. Um, so when Greg had the call with him, he's like, "No, nah, I'll be fine." I did, they just left me out of that another, game. Cause... Another another fucking reason why bring in Scully and uh, Scully instead of uh, no bring Scully in. Just, just just make a and change. Bring Christ. twenty eight players and bring them in regardless. What That's is the stupid. fucking hang up with twenty six and twenty seven? What a fucking. Uh, don't just... worry, next. No, don't worry. The November window, we'll have twenty eight. We'll be good. Yeah, we'll have twenty. <laughs> Don't worry. By, by the time World Cup starts, we'll have we'll have brought in thirty players to a World Cup qualifying. I guarantee it's going to happen. Sixty nine, <laughs> sixty nine, so, sixty nine. That's what I want. Are, are we 69 both sixty nine players? Are we both in agreement that Dest is going to probably start right back? Yeah, we can move on to Adams. It's Adams at, the, at six. Uh, six. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to. I mean, unless he tries something stupid again, which I don't think he will. I think he learned his lesson. Hopefully, he learned um, his lesson. Yeah, I think he did. <laughs> I think he did. And unless McKenny, he might, he might, he might say, you know what? I tried something really stupid, and we got a four-one win away. Maybe I try something stupid again. <laughs> I'll need. We'll need to be beaten up badly in the first <laughs> half, and that'll inspire the troops. Let's do then it. We'll change. Then we'll change formation. I hope that doesn't happen. No, um, no. So Adams, and then I got McKenney and um, Legette. I'd like to see Musa, but I don't think that um, Greg would be comfortable starting Musa. Mm. So I do think it's going to be McKenney and Legette at the eights. I can definitely see your point with that. I did went with, I went with McKinney and Musa, and that may be more of a get out of Berhalter's mind and into my own fantasy. Uh, but. Yeah. It could be, but also we don't know if there's some sort of, um, um, you know, ceremony that has to go on for McKenney to win back the favor of the coaches and the players, as Greg so put in his. Yeah, he's got he's got he's got to bend over. He's got to bend over on the goal line, and everybody kicks a ball at his butt. I mean, that's at how least we that. that or there's that <laughs> also the giant U.S. men's national team paddle. I don't know if you've seen that. It's a big paddle. It's very reminiscent of a cricket paddle. And it has U.S. men's national team inscribed into it. And there have been people who have had to and, take uh, at least nails five and bar- nails, th- nails marked through it and barbed wire around it, I'm assuming. Well, I just, there was a rumor that <laughs> Landon, Landon Donovan had to take at least five of those crushing smacks before being called back to the team after his little getaway there in Asia. But in fairness, then Klinsman left him off the World Cup uh, World Cup roster. That's because Donovan <laughs> took the smacks like a bitch. He cried. And so he's like, <laughs> he's like, that guy's a powder puff. He can't be on my team going do you think, forward. Do you think, do you think uh, Donovan's going to be upset that McKinney's back in the roster since he <laughs> said it was almost, it was almost unforgivable? Well, McKinney's back. McKinney's back. Oh, he's man. back. He's back on the <laughs> roster, land, and you fucked that up. It was not almost. It was very forgivable, uh, actually. So uh, apparently, he's right Two back games, on. Regret. 
He apparently he, <laughs> you know, the salami was rendered, but it never hit the target, and we're okay. We're yeah. okay going forward. All right. Um, and then we got our three up front. And this might be wishful thinking, but I'm thinking uh for the wingers, uh, I've got Hoppy and Aronson. Hmm. And I, it's wishful thinking because I'm pretty sure Greg's gonna start Ariola. I have Aronson and Wea. Yeah. Okay. I don't think Greg feels comfortable with Wea yet. I don't think Wea's had to play a, a big game. <laughs> I, I, don't feel, I don't feel comfortable that Ariel is not going to blow his knee out again. Okay, well, we can dream all we want about who we want. I want Hoppy over Way even. Sure. And, but I, it's can, gonna I, can be, see, I can see that point, but I, I don't see it happening, but I can see that point. Ariel, I'm telling you, Ariel is going to start this first game, dude. Uh, I guarantee it. I feel it. Hey, in you know my what? You know scrotum. what? You know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, on your roster, Legit and uh, Ariel will, will team up with a couple back passes and uh, we'll. we'll We'll start fresh from our center backs again. I think Dude, it's possible. I, think it's I mean, possible. okay. But, I mean, <laughs> here is here is this guy, Greg, who went on like a 10-minute piss fucking pity story about how it's so awful that he doesn't have Areola and Morris to <laughs> add verticality. I mean, this guy's been singing these guys' praises for, I mean, it's ridiculous how much he talks about them. And so I can only guess. I mean, it's a feeling deep down in my scrotum, as if I've had a hernia, that we're gonna see. Um, we're gonna see Ariola start. Now he's a hard worker. I have nothing against him as a personal, but I mean, if you've got Hoppy and you've got Wea and you've got Aronson, he's, there's no point in starting Ariola. Ariel Ariola is basically this. This cycles Bedoya. And nothing hey, against no. Bedoya. But do, no, 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 no. What? I Hard love worker. Bedoya. And, uh, nothing. It's not, a, not. I have nothing against Bedoya. I don't think against Areola for that matter, but I think there are better players than Areola. I, all I'm saying is Areola is a hard worker. Bedoya is way more skilled than Areola. I don't discredit way that. More. I don't, I don't doubt. I'm not, I'm not discrediting him on that front, but uh, for the 2014 cycle, and I don't know. Um, he was running through the uh, 2018, wasn't he? Was he part of 2018? Who? Uh, Bedoya? Bedoya? No, I don't think so. Regardless, when he played, he he was he was the workhorse of the midfield, and I loved him for it. He was great, phenomenal, and yes, he's a very talented kid. But I'm just yes. saying that Ariel is is is, is maybe maybe a uh, a poor man's uh, Bedoya. Let's put it that way, okay? <laughs> they both work hard, and that's so. In that regard, I get it. I just think, yeah. Uh, Bedoya's oh, Bedoya, Bedoya in his prime versus Ariel in his prime. I take Bedoya any, any day of the week. Mm -hmm. Any day. Uh, I mean, Bedoya has been the the one important like linking uh, piece for uh, Philadelphia's runs yep. in the yep. last two or three seasons, and and how why and how they have improved. So to me, he's just totally underrated. But that's okay. Um, and then center forward, uh, Pepe got to be yeah. Pepe. You're not bringing yeah. Sergeant. It's got to be you fucked Peacock in the. He grabbed his ankles and just took the old rod of the whatever. <laughs> and I'm just saying, yeah, we're just left no choice. It's got to be Peppy. I'd love to see Hoppy up there in one of these three games in the center forward position. But yeah, it's Peppy. Barring barring an injury to Zardis or Peppy, I don't see Hoppy playing center forward at all. Yeah, it's kind but, of. I mean, quite frankly, uh, given his skill set and his tenacity. Um, playing the ballistic role where you basically have freedom to roam in that offensive third and uh, ideally the, that role and you pinch into the middle and you, you get the ball and you move around that might play out to his benefit. We saw him in the gold cup, his ability of checking back in the ball and moving it up the field with, with a, with a point was something that the rest of the team didn't have, but Dude, that, 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 that could that could be a solid option, a solid position for him in Berhalter's setup. I mean, listen, Hoppy's got a pair of bull balls. This yeah. guy is ready to rage. He's ready to go. He's got horns out. This guy's ready to fucking ball. He got he's got to play in this these three games. He's yeah, got to absolutely. get out there. Um, you need guys with killer instincts like that. So I hope it happens. Mm -hmm. Um, but and so I have him starting. You've got Wea starting. And I think that's. I'd be more than I'd be more than happy to have uh, Hoppy starting too, but I have Waya. I picked Waya. Okay, but we both agree Aronson starting oh. on the wing again. 
five goals in 10 games. He's, he's our best offensive pressure, uh, 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 point man right now. He's, oh, yeah. he's, I mean, he's, he's just, doing exactly what Pulisic did last cycle. God, he's just killing it every game for fucking yeah. vibes, uh, for uh, Salzburg too. Yeah. I mean, he's just it's, killing it's, it. Yeah. It's there. So uh, he's got the he's, confidence. Uh, and he's, he's not the, I mean, he's not the, tip, he's not the player that's going to receive the ball and try to dribble four or five players. Yeah. He's going to be the player who gets the ball, passes it off and then finds that hole, uh, after a shot or a cross comes through. And like I said, he got five goals in 10 games. I mean, that's a pretty hell. That's a hell of a good, uh, uh scoring rate. So we get to the, winger. I know. So we get to this point now people are going to, this is where the, the rubber meets the road, right? Um, Heath Pierce and Jimmy Conrad both agreed seven points is absolutely what we need to go for here. Seven points, minimal, minimal. They're starting to sound like us, but they, yeah, they are. (laughs) They are starting to sound like us. We got hounded so hard for, for saying like, Oh, seven to nine points. Oh, you guys don't understand anything about anything. Bullshit! We've been both watching the fucking U.S. men's <laughs> national team our whole lives, and I'm 50 years old, motherfucker, which means I've been watching it since I was fucking 13 years old, 12 years old. How many years have you watched the U.S. men's national team? I'm 50. I started watching when I was 13. Before, I wrote soccer so articles. 11. I've been to games. I've covered the sport for fucking how many years? Don't tell me I don't know my business just because I expect I have high expectations. So, I'm expecting the same thing. Seven or bust. Seven or bust. Yep, I'm, ex- I'm expecting 10 points. <laughs> Come on. You already, <laughs> you already told that joke tonight. And it's going to work. Now, so <laughs> we got to make up points from last, uh, last window, so I feel like we can uh, pull it off. No, I, I agree. Uh, seven, to, seven to nine points. Um, I think every game here is winnable. It is, and I I suspect that it's always possible that we flood it too. So uh, I'm going to say seven to nine. Okay, and, but then that was my uh, that was my prediction last window too, and see how well that turned out. We got a depleted Jamaica should be a yeah. win. We yeah. got Panama away, another one of the teams. I know they're in fourth right now. I get it, and they just well they tied uh, they tied Mexico in their last home game. They're going to be hard, but come on, let's go take it. Let's get at least a tie there. All right. Then we come home and we play Costa Rica. Bunch of old guys coming out on, on their the third field. match as well in six games. Yeah. Or playing, six with, playing with crutches. All right. A lot of them. Because that could be so an advantage, old. though, in all honesty. They use I think they have to one. Take us out of the knee. Ah, goddamn. <laughs> they got one guy in a wheelchair they roll out every game. <laughs> Listen, we can win that game. So two wins, a tie. Minimal, I think, is seven points in a totally what we should be short shooting for but if you listen to greg we're shooting for nine okay so greg shooting for nine why can't we shoot for nine we're not going to shoot we're we would we're both shooting for nine as well but we'll, we'll we think seven's a comfortable number which is that agreeable yes all right i think that should do it for this show um make sure that you like subscribe um share it with your your auntie uh fuck how many, I mean, aunt, how many aunts do these people have i swear to god all right we'll move to an uncle i think i've done some uncles too but uncle yeah. joe i'll send it to uncle joe um and uh, <laughs> all right uh send it to uncle joe and then um go to our patreon page um we have people there now and we're actually working on a plan on how we're going to entertain the people on patreon if we get more than you know a handful we'll start actually like okay here's the plan here's how we're going to do it this is what we're going to do here's the, what the shit you're going to get that other people aren't going to get we're working on it i promise you we'll have something special there and it won't be just like our shows on like dogs like sometimes we just talk about dogs for <laughs> half an hour but if you want us to talk about those are dogs, entertaining shows if you yes, everybody can you, learn a little bit about pups yeah. if you want to learn more about dogs we will do a podcast about dogs for you on that show, just depending. And I think what we'll do is we'll take any question at all, as long as it's not political. We don't want, we don't need that shit. We don't need that shit. So just stick to soccer, stick to, you know, questions about life and, and um, um, you know, make it very um, philosophical. Um, and if, whether, if, we're, if we're required to throw in a couple of little asterisks to make sure that certain words don't show up, we can do that. 
Yeah, we, we can do that. Do that. <laughs> if you want to get transcendental and talk about that with us, transcendentalism, we're willing to talk about that. If you want to talk about if you're an existentialist, you want to talk about existentialism, we're willing to do that too. So, um, you know, we're we can do all those things. We're we're not a one trick pony here, and so that might be one of the options we're we're thinking about. But um, we've got to move on um, because it's getting late for Brett. He's uh, he's got things to do with his significant other. <laughs> That's too personal. I shouldn't have said that. Well, all right. Anyhow, let, let, let's add a little bit of context to it. It's, uh, it's my ninth anniversary. So, oh snap! Word, word. What, 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 what's uh, what's the ninth year? God, what is that? Is that a? Uh... Oh, it doesn't matter. I didn't get anything. <laughs> <laughs> ninth my... year for me. Ninth year for me was divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! I better not begin that. No, no, I'm not. I'm not wishing that on you. That's just when the whole proceeding started, and it finished about the 11th. They're saying for you, the ninth year was papers because you were served them. No, I, no, no, I was not served papers. <laughs> or no. vice versa. Sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> that was your All present. Right. Yeah, that's not how that worked out. But goddamn, I hope my ex-wife does not listen to this show. Holy shit! But you know her. She's a she's a nice person. Yes, she's a really she's good nice. person. Yeah, yeah. that's. That, yeah. that wasn't the problem. No, um, I'm not a nice person. That might have been the problem. Anyhow, <laughs> fuck this got personal. All right, until <laughs> the next time on the Straight Red Card, go 